As the early morning sun of September 17, 1862 rose over the fields surrounding Antietam, the 6th Wisconsin, the recently dubbed Iron Brigade, neared the southern part of Miller's cornfield. Major Rufus Dawes recalls a long line of men in butternut and gray rose up from the ground. Simultaneously, the hostile battle lines opened a tremendous fire upon each other. Men, I cannot say, fell. They were knocked out of the ranks by the dozens. Here, the 6th Wisconsin would blaze away at the Confederates until they were forced back by Hood's Amish Texans. The 6th Wisconsin Volunteer Infantry Regiment was raised and mustered into federal service on July 16, 1861 at Madison, Wisconsin for three years of service. They would be transported to Washington, D.C. for the defense of the city, where in October, they would be brigaded with other Western regiments of the 2nd and 7th Wisconsin and the 19th Indiana regiments under the command of Brigadier General Rufus King. In March, King would be promoted to divisional commander, and John Gibbon would replace him as the brigade's commander. Gibbon worked tirelessly to make his command more professional and approve upon their appearance. He ordered his brigade white leggings, which his brigade hated, and the distinctive black hardy hat where they would earn the nickname the Black Hat Brigade. In early 1862, they would be sent to Virginia where they would be on garrison duty until joining Pope in his Northern Virginia campaign. As Gibbon's brigade was marching northeast along the Warrenton Turnpike on the old Bull Run battlefield to join Pope at Centerville, they were attacked by Jackson's wing on August 28. The 6th would be the last regiment to join the fight in the brigade, stopping Trimble's brigade in their tracks. Major Rufus Dawes recalls the battle. Our men on the left loaded and fired with the energy of madmen, and the 6th worked with equal desperation. This stopped the rush of the enemy, and they halted and fired upon us with their deadly musketry. During a few awful moments, I could see by the lurid light of the powder flashes the whole of both lines. The two were within 50 yards of each other, pouring musketry into each other as fast as men could load and shoot. Unfortunately, due to the heavy fighting at Groverton, they would be in reserve until the last day of the Second Manassas to act as a rear guard. During the Maryland campaign, they would join with McClellan in his chase for the old Gray Fox. The 6th would be led by Lieutenant Colonel Edward S. Bragg, who was under John Gibbon's Black Hat Brigade, which was attached to Abner Doubleday's 1st Division in Joseph Hooker's 1st Corps. When the Federals found Special Order 191 detailing Lee's movements, McClellan moved with unprecedented speed to catch Lee. D. H. Hill moved to South Mountain to block the passes. Here, on September 16th, would be the 6th and the Black Hats rise to fame. Burnside chose the Black Hats to attack straight up the National Road head-on. Here they would press Colquitt's Georgians ferociously with the 6th climbing up the gorge to flank, but without any support they failed to push them off the gap. McClellan, watching from his headquarters, said that the Black Hats fight like they must be made of iron. From then on they would be called the Iron Brigade. Due to the overwhelming Federal numbers, the Confederates escaped in the night to Antietam. The Federals followed in their footsteps and camped out near the Confederate lines around Sharpsburg, with the 6th positioning itself at Poffenberger's farm. The Cheese Regiment was woken up early to artillery fire and sent south with the first major attack of the battle. As the 6th led the attack on Hooker's right flank, they were hit by a surprise volley by the Stonewall Brigade. With the support of the flanking 7th Wisconsin and the 19th Indiana, the 6th pushed the famed Virginians away. With the threat gone, the 6th Wisconsin joined their sister Iron Brigade of the East in their attack south of the cornfield, where when they reached the edge got cut down by a surprise volley of low-lying Confederates, losing their colonel in the process. Fused together with the New Yorkers, the Wisconsinites shredded anybody that went against them, until they met the fiery attack of Hood's Texans, who fired a volley that was stated by Major Dawes to be like a scythe running through our line. This attack put an end to the 6th advance, and they ran for the rear. The battlefield was too terrible to behold without a shock. I never want to see another such, commented the wounded Lieutenant Colonel Bragg. In the aftermath of the fighting, the 6th Wisconsin would lose 152 men dead, wounded, and missing at Antietam.
the men of the 6th Wisconsin would carry into battle the powerful Austrian Lorenz M1854 rifle. Them and the 2nd Wisconsin would be the only regiments in the Army of the Potomac to carry this style of rifle, and thus harder to supply with the correct 54 caliber mini ball due to this gun and ammunition being supplied to Western armies. The most distinctive part of the 6th Wisconsin's uniforms is their tall, locked, brimmed black hat called the Hardy Hat, which made them recognizable throughout the entire war. From there, the men wore a dark blue Union frock coat and sky blue trousers with white canvas leggings that covered the top of the shoes and bottom tips of the trousers to keep dirt and rocks out. The 6th Wisconsin carries the regimental flag into battle. The flag features the unit's name on a red ribbon with the American Eagle and stars on one side, and, on the opposite side, an eagle in a clouded circle with stars around it. Furthermore, the unit's name again is found on a ribbon below. All of the above features are imprinted upon a beautiful dark blue background with gold trimming. Currently, you can find the 6th Wisconsin on the map of Hagerstown Turnpike and Miller's Cornfield as they lead the first attack and fight the many waves of Confederates sent against them north of Dunkard Church. Now, what will you do? Will you join up with the feared black hats of the 6th Wisconsin, or will you send them running back through the cornfield in which you found them? The choice is yours, my friends. Choose wisely.